The next piece I want to dis discuss is Jardi Tancat by Nacho Duato. Jardi Tancat meaning closed garden. And to sort of put this into perspective, we have to consider another development uh, in dance of the 20th century, and that is expressionist modern dance. Now, at the beginning of the 20th century, all artists were starting to question the values that before had been completely taken for granted, things like paternalism and Christianity and all kinds of societal restrictions. And it came about in part because of all this social unrest that existed at the beginning of the 20th century, compounded by the horrors of the First World War. And also, they were influenced by Freud's early explorations about man's unconscious drives. And artists were looking to create new forms that could reflect upon the human condition and forms that would allow them to express themselves personally. And they began to think of dance as a vehicle for transmitting important ideas, not just as entertainment, but as a force for change. And of course, they looked at ballet, and they saw it as decadent and artificial, dealing with silly themes, sylphs, willies, princesses. It just all seemed nonsense to them, and only interested in being pretty and entertaining. And they weren't interested in being entertaining. They didn't want to be decorative. They wanted to you know, explore the human condition and the psyche of man. Now, it, it's a really tricky term, expressionist dance and modern dance, because it was a vehicle for personal expression. So there were as many sort of variations of it as there were people doing it. But the one thing they all were was anti-ballet. So they rejected its themes, they rejected its characters, they weren't going to be doing any dancing fairies, uh, where ballet is all vertical and upright and denying gravity, pretending that they, you know, everything was effortless and that they uh, you know, weren't subject to the pull of gravity. Modern dancers relished in gravity. They showed effort, they allowed them, themselves to show the gravitational pull, they showed their weight, of course, Ballets on point shoes, they were barefoot. Uh, and they used the floor in a way that ballet never had done before. And they also start to use the spine uh, in a very different way than ballet. Now, one of the, the best known uh, exponents of modern dance uh, is Martha Graham. And she developed a whole movement vocabulary based on contracting and releasing the muscles of the abdomen. Contracting the abdomen you know, caused the chest to sink and the shoulders to round, and she used that to express you know, all kinds of, sort of negative emotions. And then, of course, you release those muscles and fill your lungs with air. It could be used to suggest ecstasy and all kinds of positive things. You know, Martha Graham's father was an alienist, kind of an early form of psychiatrist. And when she was young, he caught her in a lie once. And he said to her, you're lying. And I know you're lying because of the way you're standing. So she had this sense from very early on that the way we moved and the way we held ourselves was an indicator of what was going on inside. Um, so contraction and release, and what it did to the spine, was something she was very interested in. Another modern dancer was Doris Humphrey. And she devised a whole movement vocabulary based on the theory of falling and recovering. And she saw it as the, so the gravity and the pull of gravity on one extreme, and on the other extreme, sort of balance, which she saw as inertia. And she said that she was interested in the dancer's struggle between gravity and inertia, which she called the arc between two deaths. So in the early days, the ballet dancers and the modern dancers had nothing to say to one another. They were diametrically opposed. Each looked on the other with suspicion, and there was virtually no communication whatsoever. But eventually, ballet opened up itself to the expanded possibilities that have been created by the modern dancers. Ballet starts to tackle themes that dealt with the human condition. 
And they adopted and incorporated the movements of modern dance too. Emotionally driven movement that was weighty, that acknowledged gravity. They took off their point shoes. They learned to contract and release. They learned how to fall and recover. Now, Nacho Duato was not the first choreographer to meld ballet and modern dance. But Jardi Tankat is an excellent example of this. It's danced, as I said, to a collection of songs that were based on Spanish folk tales. There's no narrative, but these songs sing of the hardships of the Catalan people in Spain who are working, toiling, trying to get this dry, barren land to produce food. And they're peasants, and they work this land by hand. So what you'll see in this ballet is the peasants like literally you know, bent over, working the ground, using contraction and release uh, and falling and using the ground to not tell a story, but to give you insight into what the lives of these people are like, their hardships and their joys. They grieve about the lack of rain uh, as they sow and work. Now, I went to some trouble to get translations of these Catalan songs, and Yosu, uh, a boy in grade 11 class who speaks Spanish, I, I got the lyrics and I said to him, you know, well, Spanish, do you think you can figure this out? And he said, no, but my grandmother speaks Catalan. So he sent the Catalan lyrics to his grandmother. She translated them into Spanish, and he translated them into English. <laughs> now, it was pretty rough translation, but looking at the choreography and then looking at the words, it was uh, quite enlightening. So there is this uh, one song uh, where this solo female dancer is singing about, you know, I'm on fire for this boy. And nothing will quench my thirst. There's a, uh, another wonderful song that's singing about how much of my sweat went into irrigating this, these beans. And in that s segment of the ballet, at, you actually see them bent over, putting the seeds in and patting it into the ground and working this land. And then the final one, uh, it, it's a story in the song about this crazy woman who wanders around the seashore like a seagull because her lover was lost at sea. And she just circles and circles around by the seashore. And then it goes on to say that she loses her mother and father. And the sea, because it's the home of the man that she loved, ultimately becomes her home. And they discover her drowned and then bury her by the sea. Now, the, that section of the ballet doesn't tell that, doesn't act out that whole story. But you'll see on the, on the right-hand side is Martha Graham. <laughs> On the left-hand side is a scene from Jardi Tankat with her wings like the seagull. And you'll actually sort of hear the cry of the seagull in this music. It's, it's very, very beautiful. Um, but I want you to see sort of the connection between Martha Graham kind of movement and the movement you see in Jardi. And I have a couple of other images here of Jardi Tankat where you can see they're using their shoulders and their backs in a way uh, that classical ballet doesn't. 